We're out here today in the West Desert of Tooele County uh, on a road called the Pony Express Route. And there's going to be about 45 people who watch the Bureau of Land Management gather approximately 200 wild horses out of the Anaki herd. Uh, the Anaki herd is pretty famous. They're beautiful horses, they're colorful, and people come from all over the world to, to watch them and take photographs of them. But there's about 500 horses out here, and the BLM says there should only be about 200 or less. The management of wild horses and burros in the West has become a problematic issue for the Bureau of Land Management. They're spending $50 million a year to warehouse these horses, but they're under a lot of public pressure just to leave the animals alone. Welcome everybody uh, out here on our uh, Anaki first day of our Anaki Wild Horse Gather. Um, my name is Gus War. I'm the uh, state Wild Horse and Burrow Program Manager for BLM Utah. These horses that we're going to gather today have just kind of continually increased and increased and uh, over time that's where they've come from. Where did they originate from? Early ranchers, uh, you know, up on the Cedar Mountains that was uh, some military remounts way back when. But most of our herd management areas, the horses originated from some local source. It looks like they're bringing in the first bunch of horses. Um, I can see a helicopter far off in the distance. And I think one of the observers was saying there was about nine animals. I think we're about a mile away from where the actual trap is. There was a time more than a decade ago when I was a lot closer, but this, this is quite, a, quite far away. You seem pretty emotional about this. It should be. There's no empathy in this administration. There's no empathy in the BLM. These horses were here long ago. It's their land. So it, these are our horses. We, you know, this is our land. These are our horses. So yeah, I am emotional. There's no other spirit like a horse. So what would you prefer them to do? Leave them alone. Let predators back to help keep the herds down. When they came in and they did the ban on slaughter, it totally changed the dynamic of the horse world. And then as horrible as slaughter sounds, it's a lot faster and than it is to, to starve and rot behind a barn. We support the long-term viability of, that, of this herd. Um, we have to do gathers, we have to manage towards appropriate management level, but you know, on a personal level, we love these horses as well, and uh, as managers, we just, we're trying to find the right balance, and we, we, we base our decisions on what we know about the land, um, and, but getting people out there to see those horses up close and personal, that's, that's some of the smiles you see out there when, yeah. we, when we go out and check on the horses and see people visiting, like, that's awesome. So since its passage in 1971, the Wild Horse and Burrow Preservation Act has been amended five times. Uh, the last time it was amended, according to Gus, the politician who was able to tackle this controversial issue was not re-elected. And so there's a lot of management approaches that could be changed if Congress was willing to take on this issue. But it is such a political hot potato, nobody wants to. And so thus we get to this stage where the federal government insists there's too many horses on the range. <laughs>